Oli Bongo Ondimba Born as Alain Bernard Bongo on the 9th of February 1959, also known as Oli Ben Bongo, is a Gabonese politician who was the third president of Gabon from 2009 to 2023. He is a member of the Gabonese Democratic Party and the son of Omar Bongo, who was president of Gabon from 1967 until his death in 2009. During his father's presidency, he was Minister of Foreign Affairs from 1989 to 1991, represented Bongoville as a deputy in the National Assembly from 1991 to 1999, and was Minister of Defence from 1999 to 2009. After his father's death, he won the 2009 Gabonese presidential election. He was re-elected in 2016, in elections marred by numerous irregularities, arrests, human rights violations, and post-election protests and violence. On August 30, 2023, following the results of the Gabonese general election, the military ousted him from the presidency in a coup d'etat and established a junta. The junta later announced that General Bryce Oliguin Gamer would act as a transitional leader. Speaking on national television surrounded by fellow soldiers on Wednesday evening, a spokesman for the Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institutions, CTRI, said that Oligui had been unanimously designated as President of the Transition. The Hunter spokesperson said authorities will investigate charges against the President's son, Neridin Bongo Valentin, who was arrested alongside six other individuals for high treason. The agents Franz Presser, AFP, news agency aired a video of the president asking his friends to make noise following his house arrest. I'm Ali Bongo Ondimba, president of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise for the people here have arrested me and my family. My son is somewhere, my wife is in another place, and I'm at the residence. Right now, I'm at the residence, and nothing happening, nothing is happening. I don't know what, what's going on. So I'm calling you to make the noise, to make noise, to make noise, really. I'm, I'm thanking you. Thank you. It was not immediately clear under what circumstances the film had been made. From music to politics, who exactly is this man? How did he rise to power and how did the Gabonese people arrive at this point? Oli Bongo was born and named Alain Bernard Bongo in Brazzaville, as the son of Albert Bernard Bongo, later Omar Bongo Ondimba, and Josephine Coma, later Patience Dabini. His mother was 18 years old at the time of his birth. He was conceived 18 months before their marriage and there have been rumors of him being Bongo's adopted son, a claim that he dismisses. Alain Bernard changed his name to Oli when he and his father converted to Islam in 1973 and, in 2003, they both adopted the Obamba patronymic Ondimba in memory of Omar's father, Bosile Ondimba. Bongo was educated at a private school in Neuilly sur Seine, France, and then studied law at the Sorbonne, University of Paris. In 2018, he received an honorary doctorate of law degree from Wuhan University in China and by 1977, he released a funk album, A Brand New Man, produced by Charles Bobbitt. Oli Bongo married his first wife, the French-born Sylvia Valentin, in 1989, she is the daughter of Edouard Valentin, CEO of the Onium Gabonese de Assurances et de Reassurances, OGAR, insurance company. Edouard Valentin's wife Evelyn works in the Secretariat of the Presidency, and Edouard is charged de affaires sociales at the Gabonese Employers' Confederation, Confederation Patronale Gabonese, CPG. In 1994, Oli Bongo married his second wife, American Inga Lynn Collins Bongo, from Los Angeles, California. At the time of Oli Bongo's election as president, Inga Bongo was living on food stamps in California. She filed for divorce in 2015. He has four children, 
one daughter, Malika Bongo Ondimba, and three sons, Nureddin Bongo Valentin, Jaleel Bongo Ondimba, and Bilal Bongo, whom he and Sylvia adopted in 2002. How did he get into politics and later the presidency of Gabon? Let us look at his early political career. After graduating from his law course, he entered politics, joining the Gabonese Democratic Party, Part 1 Democratic Gabonese, abbreviated PDG, in 1981. He was elected to the PDG Central Committee at the party's Third Extraordinary Congress in March 1983. Subsequently, he was his father's personal representative to the PDG and in that capacity he entered the PDG Political Bureau in 1984. He was then elected to the Political Bureau at an ordinary party congress in September 1986. Bongo held the post of High Personal Representative of the President of the Republic from 1987 to 1989. In 1989, his father appointed him to the government as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation replacing Martin Bongo. He was considered a reformist within the ruling PDG in the early 1990s. In the 1990 parliamentary election, the first election after the introduction of multi-party politics, he was elected to the National Assembly as a PDG candidate in Otogo province. After two years as foreign minister, a 1991 constitutional amendment setting a minimum age of 35 for ministers resulted in his departure from the government. Following his departure from the government, Bongo took up his seat as a deputy in the National Assembly in 1991. In February 1992, he organized a visit by American pop singer Michael Jackson to Gabon. Bongo became president of the Higher Council of Islamic Affairs of Gabon, Consul Superior de Affaires Islamiques du Gabon, CSAIG, in 1996. Prior to the December 1996 parliamentary election, a supporter of Defence Minister Idris Ngari challenged Bongo for the PDG nomination to his parliamentary seat, but Bongo was successful in winning the nomination and retaining the seat. In surviving that challenge, he benefited from the assistance of his maternal uncle Jean Boniface Asil, one of his key political allies. After over seven years as a deputy, Bongo was appointed to the government as Minister of National Defense on January 25, 1999. In December 2001 parliamentary election, Bongo was elected to the National Assembly as a PDG candidate in Otogo province. At the PDG's 8th Ordinary Congress in July 2003, he was elected as a vice president of the PDG. During the 2005 presidential election, he worked on his father's re-election campaign as coordinator general of youth. Following that election, he was promoted to the rank of Minister of State on January 21, 2006, while retaining the defense portfolio. Bongo was re-elected to the National Assembly in the December 2006 parliamentary election as a PDG candidate in Otogo province. He retained his post as Minister of State for National Defence after that election, although he was subsequently reduced to the rank of Ordinary Minister on December 28, 2007. At the PDG's 9th Ordinary Congress in September 2008, he was re-elected as a Vice President of the PDG. What are the events surrounding his rise to power as president of Gabon? Omar Bongo, his father died at a Spanish hospital on June 8, 2009. Oli Bongo appeared on television that night to call for calm and serenity of heart and reverence to preserve the unity and peace so dear to our late father. Having been appointed to key positions by his father, it was widely considered likely that he would emerge as his father's successor following the latter's death in June 2009. Some press reports predicted a power struggle, however, suggesting that a fierce rivalry existed between Bongo and his sister Pascaline, who was director of the presidential cabinet. The degree of support for Oli Bongo within the PDG leadership was also questioned in the press, 
and it was argued that many Gabonese see him as a spoiled child, born in Congo Brazzaville, brought up in France, hardly able to speak indigenous languages and with the appearance of a hip-hop star. Bongo was one of 10 candidates who submitted applications to become the PDG's candidate in the early presidential election, scheduled for August 30, 2009. PDG Deputy Secretary General Angel Ondo announced on July 16 that the party leadership had chosen Bongo by consensus as the PDG candidate, although this decision still needed to be formally confirmed at a party congress. An extraordinary PDG Congress accordingly designated Bongo as the party's candidate on July 19. On that occasion, he thanked delegates for their choice, saying he was aware of the legitimate concerns of the people, he vowed to battle corruption and redistribute the proceeds of economic growth as president. Despite standing as a presidential candidate, Bongo was retained as Minister of Defense in the government appointed on July 22, 2009. Rose Rogomb urged calm and called for the candidates to be worthy of the votes they would receive. The opposition strongly protested Bongo's continued inclusion in the government. After interim President Rose Francine Rogomb said that Bongo would be replaced so that all candidates would be on an equal footing for the election, Interior Minister Jean-Francois Ndongu was appointed to take over from Bongo as Minister of Defence in an interim capacity when the election campaign officially began on August 15, 2009. A few days after the election on August 30, 2009, it was announced that he had won the election with 42% of the vote, and that result was promptly confirmed by the Constitutional Court. The opposition rejected the official results, and riots broke out in Gabon's second largest city, Port Jonti. In response to allegations of fraud, the Constitutional Court conducted a recount before again declaring Bongo the winner with 41.79% of the vote on October 12, 2009, he was then sworn in as president on October 16, 2009. Various African presidents were present for the ceremony. Bongo expressed a commitment to justice and the fight against corruption at the ceremony and said that fast action was needed to give back confidence and promote the emergence of new hope. He also alluded to his father's governing philosophy of preserving stability through regional, tribal, and political balance in the allocation of power, while also stressing that excellence, competence and work were even more important than geographical and political considerations. Later in the day, he announced the reappointment of Paul Bayogi MBA as Prime Minister, he made the announcement personally to underline the importance of this moment. According to Bongo, Bayogi MBA had the necessary experience and managerial competence to lead us through the next stage, and he said work would start immediately. The composition of Bayogi MBA's new government was announced on October 17, it was reduced to only 30 ministers, thereby fulfilling Bongo's campaign promise to reduce the size of the government and thereby reduce expenses. The government was also mostly composed of new faces, including many technocrats, although a few key ministers, such as Paul Tangui, Foreign Minister, Jean-Francois Ndongu, Interior Minister, and Law Olga Gonjout, Communications Minister, retained their posts. His later political slash social activities at the helm of Gabon statecraft. On June 9, 2011, Oli Bongo and Barack Obama met at the White House. In 2012, clashes between the supporters of opposition figure Andre Mba Obeim and police occurred in Libreville. In July 2015, he met with Lionel Messi after he invited the footballer to Gabon. During his visit, Messi was shamed for his style of clothing since many of the opposition believed that since he was rich he had to wear something nice. On August 17, 2015, Bongo announced that he planned to donate everything he inherited from his father to the young people of Gabon, in the form of a foundation for youth and education. Explaining his decision, he said that we are all heirs of Omar Bongo on Dimba and that no Gabonese must be left by the side of the road. Gabon's economy continues to be based on a rent strategy, being entirely devoted to the production and export of natural resources. Many difficulties persist in addition. Unemployment rate around 30% of the active population in 2016, expeditious arrests during student or union demonstrations, numerous since January 2016, 
deterioration of access to health care. A deposit of 300,000 CFA francs is now required to enter the hospital. Deficiency of public services. Recurrent electricity cuts. More than half of the population is below the poverty line. On October 24, 2018, Bongo was hospitalized in Riyadh for an undisclosed illness. On November 29, 2018, Bongo was transferred to a military hospital in Rabat to continue recovery. On December 9, 2018, it was reported by Gabon's Vice President Musava that Bongo had a stroke in Riyadh and has since left the hospital in Rabat and is currently recovering at a private residence in Rabat. From October 24, 2018 to January 1, 2019, Bongo was not seen in public, leading to rampant speculation about the possibility that he may have died or otherwise become incapacitated. On January 1, 2019, Bongo gave his first public address via a video posted to social media since falling ill in October 2018 quashing rumors of his death. Despite this, many anti-Bongo activists living abroad questioned the legitimacy of the video with some claiming that the man giving the address was not Bongo, but a body double. In August 2019, Bongo made his first public appearance since his stroke and has appeared in public using a wheelchair on several occasions since his stroke. On January 7, 2019, soldiers in Gabon launched a coup d'etat attempt. The coup attempt failed, and the government successfully reasserted control. The coup may not have actually happened though, as has been reported by critics, and could have been used as a tactic by the government to gain support. As a result of Bongo's medically induced absence from politics, Gabon has witnessed the proliferation of official corruption targeting foreign-owned businesses. In early January 2020, the Senate and National Assembly passed a constitutional reform that would allow the president to appoint one-third of senators in place of elections, among other changes. In October 2021, Bongo was named in the Pandora Papers leak. The 2023 disputed election and overthrow of Oli Bongo. In January 2018, both houses of the bicameral Gabonese parliament voted in favor of creating a two-round electoral ballot system, which would replace the single round, first past the post system used for previous presidential and parliamentary elections in the country. This was later reversed in April 2023, nearly five months prior to the Gabonese general elections, following political consultations in February. Other changes agreed to by the Gabonese government include five-year terms for all elected officials in the country, as well as the abolition of re-election limits. Roughly one month before the elections, which were scheduled to be held on August 26, the Gabonese Centre for Elections announced a last-minute change to the ballot system that requires voters to support a parliamentary candidate from the same party as the preferred presidential candidate. The leading opposition candidate, Albert Ondo Osa, is an independent, thereby making it impossible for Gabonese voters to simultaneously vote for him and a parliamentary representative of the multi-party alternance 2023 opposition coalition, which chose Osa as their joint candidate. Foreign media outlets and independent observers were reportedly prevented from entering Gabon on the day of the election. Delays were reported at several polling stations, with people waiting in line for hours before getting the chance to cast their ballots. In the evening after voting took place, the Gabonese government restricted internet access and media broadcasts from French news outlets, and a curfew was imposed. Just two hours before the polls closed, Ondo Osa denounced fraud orchestrated by the Bongo camp. He had already claimed victory and urged Bongo to facilitate a peaceful transfer of power based on his own purported vote count. The official election results were announced in the middle of the night on state television without prior notice. The country was placed under curfew and internet access was cut off throughout the nation, measures implemented by the government to prevent the spread of false news and potential violence. In the early morning of August 30, Bongo's re-election was declared by the Gabonese Electoral Commission with 64.27% of the vote. Minutes later, the military seized the presidential palace in Libreville and around a dozen military personnel announced the end of Bongo's regime, with a military spokesperson claiming to be speaking on behalf of a committee for the transition and restoration of institutions, citing his irresponsible, unpredictable governance that had led to a continuous degradation of social cohesion, risking pushing the country into chaos. They also announced the annulment of the recent election, 
the dissolution of state institutions, and the closure of the country's borders. Among the officers seen during the announcement were army colonels and members of the Republican Guard. The junta later announced the arrest and home detention of Bongo and his eldest son and advisor Nureddin Bongo Valentin, adding that the two were with family and doctors. Also arrested by the junta were several of Bongo's presidential aides. The junta said that they were facing charges that included treason, embezzlement, corruption, falsifying the president's signature and drug trafficking. Despite his detention, Bongo released a video on social media in which he appeared distressed while pleading for help in English, calling on his friends and supporters both in Gabon and around the world to raise their voice and make noise in response to the coup. Rice Oligui, commander of the Republican Guard, was later installed as interim president by the military junta. And that brings us to the end of our video on Oli Bongo. We explored his early life in Gabon, his rise to power, and the tumultuous events surrounding the coup that ultimately led to his overthrow. As always, we encourage you to continue learning and researching to gain a broader understanding of this complex political landscape. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.